Okay, we're back with part two of revisiting the ES40 emulator. This installment will be uh, really quite brief. Um, it's just about uh, configuring uh, the configuration file. Sounds a little weird. About generating a configuration file to run the emulator. Uh, and there's a utility provided that will make this relatively straightforward. Still a couple issues with the configurator. Um, put in a change to the repository last week that at least lets it pull the interfaces uh, for PCAP correctly, um, at least in my environment here, which is uh, OmniOS, so Lumos. Um, there still are a couple annoying things that I'd like to uh, fix there and uh, probably get around to those. So configuring a few things you need are, first you need some ROMs. So we have the ROMs here. Let's unzip them. Let's get that ready. That was annoying. Um, then uh, we'll run the configurator. So in the same place where the binaries are generated, this would probably get installed if you did a make install. And simple question and answer configuration has some help. Uh, we're gonna do none for the, the GUI. Uh, we'll give it one gig of memory. Point it to where you decompress the ROMs or you unzip the ROMs. It's gonna ask where it's files are going to be saved. I recommend only one CPU. It doesn't really work if you don't have one CPU. iCache, the, the instruction cache, try it both ways. Uh, typically leave that off, um, but I haven't noticed any significant real-world speed difference if you turn it on or off. That can be left to 800, but if you do try with two CPUs, drop down the speed of the CPU um, significantly, and you might actually be able to get it to boot. Uh, port where it's going to do the console, and this is one of the one things I want to change, is it defaults to putting PuTTY as a program to start, but it will take none, and it also prompts for a second serial port. And I'll also put none there. Uh, one of the issues is it's going to wait until there's a Telnet connection on both of those uh, before starting. And we'll see in a second, there's still some edits to make to the file once this has been generated. Uh, we don't want a floppy controller. Don't want to add any disks to the ID controller. We do want to add a SCSI controller. And we'll put it in 0.2. And let's add uh, DKA0, so it'll be a file, it's a disk, it's not read-only, uh, and this extra metadata, not important. Uh, and we also want to add a CD-ROM, we'll put in ID4. Give it the OpenVMS alpha ISO file, and CD-ROM. We're done adding disks to the SCSI controller. Uh, we want to add a NIC. Put it in slot 4. And so question mark brings up a list of the interfaces we have. Obviously we want this guy that's the second uh, interface I added to the zone, which has uh, promiscuous filtering turned off. Prompts for a MAC address. And we're done adding cards. Ask for your uh, line printer output. Skip that. I didn't install Emacs. We'll, we'll stick with VI. If I could type today. And we'll make some edits here. So 
the memory is stored as the number of bits. So 30 here is 1 gig, 29 would be 512 meg, and so on. Here's our CPU 0. If we wanted to add a CPU 1, you just increment that. I have no idea how many total it would support. And these are the serial blocks. And what I typically like to do is just pull out serial 1. And as you notice, it didn't prompt if we wanted the IDE controller in there. So it gives us this IDE controller by default. You could put your disks there. It will emulate it. Um, but I'm going to put the SCSI controller in here. I think it works a little bit better. And here's DKA0, DKA400. Uh, but it's not populating the CD-ROM value correctly. I don't know if this is truly important. We set CD-ROM to false there and CD-ROM to true here. Um, here you can see it gives us the right adapter name. We have no USB, no VGA, no mouse. Those are the edits to the config file. Should be able to now boot the emulator. Ah, oh, how silly. I forgot to um, make a file for the main disk here for DKA0. Uh, you can also use the auto create size uh, flag, but this is just as simple. And now it's waiting for connection. And we've got our console up. Take a hot second to test the memory. Uh, while this emulator works for the most part, uh, it is a bit slow. So it's about a quarter of the performance um, on same hardware as, say, Alpha VM Free, which I know is no longer available. Um, and for doing, say, VMS, it's about... Hmm, you know, a little bit less than half the speed of uh, SimH doing a, a you know, MicroVex 3900, like for like operations, but it feels a little bit more slow than that, uh, especially with some network operations. Is some of that the environment here on Illumos and the compilers? Maybe. Uh, could be tweaked. Possibly. Haven't really looked into it. Uh, when I tested it earlier, I got about 18 VUPs. Uh, which is not very good, um, whereas on SimH I was getting around 50 VUPs. So. Not terribly speedy, but it is open source and free and mostly works. So that counts for something. Uh, we're going to get this booted up into the installer. Probably won't go through the full install of OpenVMS here. Uh, just because that would take a while, uh, but just to show this segment here. So here are all the disks, our DKA0, our DKA400. We also have our network interface there. And as you can see, we are booting the OpenVMS installer. So that's all there really is to configuring ES40. Um, I hopefully will push another couple of changes just to the configurator um, pretty soon, just to be able to not put in the second uh, serial port, not put in the second serial port, and to default to none for the startup program. Um, because that really is is a little bit annoying that it defaults to buddy. Um, again, sorry this is a little quick one, just covers this. Uh, leave a comment if you want to see continuing of this and see an actual full install of OpenVMS on video, um, or if you want to see full install of OpenVMS on Alpha VM here in an LX branded zone. No, we did that before, but now that we have a bit more horsepower here, um, you can get a, a bigger system. Um, doing a little bit of planning here on the home network. 
set up some blocks for getting the emulated VAX, emulated alpha, uh, maybe doing a little bit with DeckNet. Um, so some stuff coming up. Um, the actual next thing I'm going to take a look at for this, totally unrelated here, is some of the updates to OmniOS. So there's some, some cool updates, and look at that. As always, thanks for watching.